last year alone, the wealth of billionaires was rising by $2.5 billion a day. And the wealth of the bottom half of humanity, 3.8 billion people, was declining, reducing by $500 million <coughs> a day. It's not difficult to see why. If you look at the business model, we work, Oxfam works with uh, garment workers in many of these Asian countries. Take Bangladesh. A woman who is stitching clothes for the clothes we, bear, the clothes we buy in HM, in Zara, in uh, the, the high street shops, earns $4 a day. <coughs> she is always in debt. When she gets sick, she's not paid. She works 20, 21 hours a day. When she's pregnant, she's fired. That's in Bangladesh. Then we also work with poultry workers in the richest country in the world, the United States. Poultry workers. These are women who are cutting the chickens and packing them and we buy them in the supermarkets. Dolores, one woman we work with there, told us that she and her co-workers have to wear diapers to work because they are not allowed toilet breaks. This is in the richest country in the world. So there's a business model that is, continues to maximize <coughs> for shareholders and to cheat the ordinary people down the supply chains and to damage the environment, damage communities, and then not pay their fair share of taxes. The top executives of these companies are among the highest paid in the world. The, owner, the chief executive of Zara is one of the highest paid people in the world. So we have a business model that has over the years grown to maximize for a few owners of capital and to cheat everybody else. And the business people who run these businesses, on top of that, avoid paying their fair share of taxes have built loopholes across the tax system. We have a tax system that leaks so much that allows $170 billion of money every year to be taken to tax havens and to be denied the developing countries that need that money most. So we have to look at the business model and we have to look at the role of governments to tax and plow back money into people's lives. The World Bank tells us that with this rate of inequality, extreme inequality, that we will not be able to eliminate, to eradicate poverty, extreme pro poverty by 2030, as has been promised, unless that inequality is reduced. <coughs> Alicia has told us that this correlation between inequality and, or rather equality and efficiency has now been disproved that you actually achieve sustained growth when you reduce inequality and the other way around. So we need to now <coughs> debunk the myths that you need first to achieve high growth before you can reduce inequality. That actually when you reduce inequality, you can achieve more sustained and faster growth. That's one. Two, we are, we are talk, we, we're not just talking about taxes. But taxes are important. Yes, we're talking about corporate taxes, income tax, inheritance tax, capital gains tax, all these wealth taxes being reduced and reduced and reduced to a point where they've been abolished in some countries. We need to get fair taxation. Bill Gates himself says the most important responsibility of a rich person is to pay their fair share of taxes. So that's, we can't avoid talking about that. But we also talk about tax evasion, the loopholes. We are in a digital economy, but the tax system is from the 1920s. It's full of loopholes that don't allow revenues to be collected. And what happens when you don't collect them? Then you don't put money into people's health and education and you widen inequalities. The gentleman who talked about who said we've just talked taxes and that jobs are there and there's low and unemployment rates are low. Let me tell you something. We're talking about jobs, but the quality of those jobs. I've just told you about Dolores in the United States who wears a diaper to work. That's not a dignified job. I can tell you about a company. I, went, I, I took a taxi in Nairobi recently. 
and I was charged, the minimum charge I think would be that, I was charged less than $2 for a taxi ride. Where in the world do you go in a taxi for less than $2? I asked the taxi driver, he was from one of these companies, I won't mention which, I said, how much are you getting out of this? He said 20% must go to the global company that owns the network. So I said, then what about the rest? He said, the rest I have to share with the owner of the taxi out of $2. I asked him where he rents his home, where he lives. He said they rent a room, three taxi drivers. They sleep in turns, six hours, five hours, because they can't, none of them can afford to rent a room. That's the job. Those are the jobs we are being told about, that globalization is bringing jobs. The quality of the jobs matter. It matters. These are not jobs of dignity. In many countries, workers no longer have a, a voice. They are not allowed to unionize. They are not allowed to negotiate for, work, for salaries. So we're talking about jobs, but jobs that bring dignity. We are talking about healthcare. The World Bank has told us that 3.4 billion people who earn $5.5 a day are on the verge, are just a medical bill away from sinking into poverty. They don't have health care. They are just a crop failure away from sinking back into poverty. They have no crop insurance. So don't tell me about low levels of unemployment. You are counting the wrong things. You're not counting dignity of people. You're counting exploited people. I, I wanna...